Hi everyone, welcome to my third podcast. Um, you'll be very pleased to know that you're not sitting in a, a cup on top of a cup. I've actually got a tripod, I can adjust it. Um, it was very cheap, but it's hopefully going to be better. Um, I'm conscious that I've got glare on my glasses, so I'm going to try and keep that right. Um, I'm sitting here also staring into the garden watching the birds because this weekend is the big garden bird watch. Um, and one of the, the upsides of lockdown, if we can have any upsides of lockdown, is being able to spend more time at home. And um, I've recently reinstalled a bird table. It's all fenced off so the Lotta and Pip can't get the food because they would. Um, Pip has pancreatitis and Addison's disease, so we have to be very careful about what she eats. So um, I can't hang out any fat balls or anything or sew it because if she ate that, it could make her very poorly. Um, Lotta's a terrible scavenger, um, not just for crochet hooks and wool, but for anything. So at the moment, it's just seeds and nuts. Um, and I'm just trying to coax the birds back onto the table. I must admit, I've been sitting here this afternoon watching and there hasn't been a lot going on. So I'm going to count properly in the morning um, when they've just woken up and I hope they're hungry. So um, I'll get the bird table primed. Um, it's just nice. It's just nice sitting here and looking. And I've got some very nice secret plans coming up um, as we head towards spring for new creative ideas um, and fun. And uh, a parcel arrived today for that, which was very exciting. And if you're watching, you know who you are who sent the parcel. And I can't wait to show everybody. But I'm not going to tell you yet because it's a secret. Um, it's going to, oh, Isla's out in the studio doing some pottery. I'm drinking from a very lovely mug that my gorgeous girl made for me for Christmas. Um, my tea's gone cold, but that's normal. Most of you that know me in person know that I'm often drinking cold tea because I never actually stop and take the time to drink when it's hot. But have a swig of cold tea. Um, it's actually matching my knitting and my scarf. Look at that. The coordination. Um, my boots are bright yellow. They match the daffodils. Um, so right now I'm swatching. And this is a, a word that's often a, a, a bad word amongst knitters. You're either, most people are either devoted swatchers or reluctant or avoidant swatchers. Um, as you'll know, I'm doing a big jumper knit along, the Golden Fern Cal, um, for the beautiful Golden Fern sweater by Knit Love Wool. Um, it's nice because a lot of her jumpers are yokes with lovely detailed colour work yokes. Um, this one's different because the detail is on the, the hem and the cuffs. Um, which is going to be fun. Um, lots of you have joined in, which is great. Um, even those of you who are a bit scared of doing colour work jumpers. Uh, but we have this, the community group, um, the Facebook group, um, part of Lockett's Cozy Colour Work Cal. I wasn't going to make another Facebook group because there would be too many. Um, but just think about the amount of you in that group, the combined knowledge and experience and knitting know-how amongst you is phenomenal. Do please make use of that resource. Um, people often think because I've got a wool shop I'll be a knitting expert but I'm very honest about the fact that I'm not. I'm a knitting enthusiast, I'm a knitting enabler, I'm yeah very interested in it all but I'm not the best knitter. I don't have a lot of jumper knitting experience um, I think being larger, I always avoided knitting jumpers because I thought, oh, it's going to take forever and it's not going to fit and I'm too fat and not going to do it. So I'm pushing myself each time. Um, so please do think about the sort of Facebook group as a really supportive source of information. This is where you can ask somebody um, who's joined the Cal, ask me, should she do it? She was quite a new knitter. Um, what should I think? And I said, I really don't want to advise because I didn't want to say to her, oh, yes, of course you can do it. It's easy and get her to spend the money and join. I wanted her to get the advice from other people. I didn't want to be the influencer 
um, and have her sign up to something that she didn't then find she was able to do. So I just said, go and talk to the group and see what you think. There have been some lovely colours going out in the post, lovely jumper combinations. Um, some of you have said, actually, I really like the base of that one, but can I have the contrast colours of that set? And I've been able to chop and change it. And there are currently five sets left in the shop. Um, greens and pinks, pinks and turquoises, uh, an orangey, rusty coloured one. So lots of lots of choice. Um, but the, the funny irony is, there's no yarn for me. <laughs> I know what colour I want to knit mine in. And there isn't any. So I'm going to be behind everybody else starting. I haven't set a specific start date. I hope those of you that have got your yarn um, have started swatching. So yes, back to swatching, which is where I started. Sorry, I diverted. Um, should you swatch? Um, if you're knitting a jumper and you've invested money in it, then yes, you should. Do I always swatch? No, I don't. But I am going to this time. Um, there's a lot of work to be done for it then to turn out not to fit. Um, I must admit that I've always thought, oh, well, I'm fat, I'll knit the biggest size and at least it will go over me. I'm trying to re-educate myself to say, yes, Lucy, you're large, but that doesn't mean you have to wear the biggest, baggiest, sloppiest thing just to cover you up. She says wearing big, baggy, sloppy jumpers. Um, I am trying to grow up a bit um, and think about whether things are going to suit me rather than are they just going to go on. So I am swatching. I the, One of the things about this particular swatch is it needs to be done in the round, which can be a pain. Um, you don't want to have to knit a lot, um, but I, I'm not a fan of um, Magic Loop. I never get my thing right, I don't do it right. So I'm actually knitting mine on two circulars held parallel like I do with my hot water bottle kits. Um, and it's important that I do it, the sample knit in the round because people's tension changes depending on whether they're knitting backwards and forwards in the flat or whether they're knitting on DPNs. I was very tempted to go to DPNs to knit this swatch and I thought, well, no, I can't because it needs to be the needles that I will be knitting this jumper in. So 3.5 circulars, two held parallel because that's my personal choice. Um, and this is the colour I want to knit the base of my jumper in, the background. And you'll have to wait and see what my contrast is. Not yellow. I was very, very, very tempted to knit a yellow and pink jumper, which I thought was going to be, I mean, this is a different yellow, but that was going to be pretty wild. But I think I've managed to talk myself down from that. Um, so yes, I'm going to swatch this. I'm going to knit a decent amount of sample. I'm going to wash it, well, soak it, let it relax, let it dry, and then I'll start measuring it um, to try and make sure I've got the right tension. Um, my friend Emma Ball has just brought out the most fabulous new bags, which you'll have seen on my Instagram. To swatch or not to swatch, that is the question. And I mean, I just love that ruler. I love the budgies and beanies. I love this bag. Um, so they are in my shop. A little bit of a plug there. Um, so what else have I been doing? So I've done swatching. Um, I've been knitting a gnome, a new gnome, because I've got this campaign that gnomes are for life, not just for Christmas. So this is going to be a garden gnome. And I think she's going to be a girl, not because she's pink, just because I fancied making one with plaits. But here's her lovely hat um, with lovely sort of leaf detail. I'm very lucky because Penny started it for me. Um, I've just got a little leaf at the top of her hat. Isn't that adorable? And then she's going to have a green body and then she'll have her white plaits. <laughs> that would be a good plait, wouldn't it? Um, oh, I meant to say about swatching. As I say, it's boring. Um, it doesn't make your jumper grow. And I think, oh, I'm going to have to swatch. I know what. I'll, get, I'll see if Penny will do it for me. And I just stopped and thought what I'd just come up with. 
I cannot get my daughter to do my swatching for me because that will not be my knitting and it would not measure my knitting. But yeah, it made me chuckle when that crossed my mind. I'd get Penny to do it. I do get Penny to do my ribbing sometimes when I don't want to do the rib on a pair of socks. I say, Penny, I'm busy. Will you knit this for me? And she'll groan and say, OK. Oh, I've got two goldfinches in the top of my tree at the bottom of the garden, looking very pretty. Um, and something else has just flown in. But yeah, I'm going to do my proper garden bird watch tomorrow morning. Um, thinking of Penny and knitting as well. Um, Penny knitted my first sample of the Lichter mitten. She did the blue and red one. I then did the, I've been doing the green and pink one. And I'd finished the thumb. And then I realised that I'd completely messed up the um, shaping at the top of the hand because I'd done my knit two togethers where I should have done my slip slip knits. So you didn't have that lovely definition that you have here. I just had sort of a white edge. So I very reluctantly had to rip that all back. Um, I'm going to knit it again or I'm going to talk to Penny, one or the other. Um, she's good. She's good. She's a very, very good knitter. <laughs> Better than me. Um, I've also been knitting with this lovely new yarn I was showing you last time from New Lanark. And I'm, I've just placed an order with them, so hopefully I'll get that next week. And lots more Little Cotton Rabbit kits will be hitting the shop, um, including the Badger. Now, I thought I'd brought Badger home to show you because he's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I think he's still hanging out with the other Little Cotton Rabbits in the shop. So um, I've started knitting his girlfriend, but I've only got as far as knitting her tummy. There we go. The grey is lovely. You see, it's lovely soft marley grey and it's proper woolly wool it's not merino soft it's good wool i think it's softer than jameson and smith um but it's lovely character wool and thinking of characters you might not be able to see who this is going to be but this is going to be a little little bunny with a, an eye patch and i sat last night knitting his ears it's one of his, whoopsie, one of his ears. Um, he's going to be very cute. Um, and I think that's about all the knitting I've been doing. Oh, I have done a bit of my crochet hat. You can see I'm jogging around with all different projects. But I've been doing some of my lovely um, hat with my gorgeous new crochet hook from Simple Natural Handmade. And I've really been enjoying using this. I don't crochet as quickly with it at the moment because it's a different shape and ergonomic use to what I'm used to but it will, I can see myself getting very used to crocheting with it um, and it's just, it's a pleasure to use. It's, um, I don't know, there's just something so tactile and rewarding about crocheting with this and this beautiful yarn um, they're just a lovely combination. Um, so this is one of the things I do when I just want to enjoy the process. I think it's going to be a nice hat. I can pretend I've got blonde hair again and it isn't almost completely grey. Um, so this week I'm going to do a bit of a combined book review on a book I'm reading and a book I've just finished listening to on Audible. Um, that will come in the next section. And at the end, I've just got another little beach trip for you. Um, it was, I had a really bad headache the other day and I don't get headaches, but um, I decided just to go with the girls to the beach and it was late and it was almost dark. I think, oh, we'd gone to the tip, that was it. Uh, one of the bad things about having the shop is I get a lot of cardboard and rubbish. Um, I don't have, um, business bin collection at the shop it's not justifiable the cost isn't justifiable so Isla gets very fed up because it comes home and the greenhouse was getting more and more full of cardboard and I promised her that on Tuesday I would take her to the tip we have a, a special system for our um, local tip where you can go on alternate days depending on what number your 
car registration finishes with. So ours was Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, so on Tuesday we went to the tip, but it got late and we went to the beach and it was almost dark. Um, but that's what the little video at the end is um, about our trip to the beach. And I haven't included a tutorial this week because I thought I'm setting myself up um, to fail. If I say every time I do one of these podcasts, I'm going to do a little demo or tutorial. Um, there's going to come time where I don't have time to do it or I don't have a new thing I want to show. So I thought, put a break in right now and say, I'm not doing one this week. Um, and then when they come, they do. Uh, so yeah, so I hope you're all having a lovely um, weekend and that the sun is shining. It is for us at the moment. It's been very wet, but the sun's out. It's cold, um, but, but nice looking out into the garden. Um, so I hope you all enjoy this. I'm sorry it wasn't very structured or much new happening, but there is a lot of new happening. It just hasn't happened. <laughs> so I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye. So actually, before I go on to my book review section, I wanted to talk about another book, but this time it's a craft one. So it goes, goes in with the, the crafty bits. Um, I don't know if any of you have started following And The Hair on Instagram. It's Karen, Karen Celestine and it's Celestine and the Hair. And she's brought out the most beautiful book called The Lightbringers, based on her needle felted animals. And it's the story of sort of winter solstice and how the light seems to disappear from the earth. And the story says that actually it's the animals have taken it deep within the earth to guard it. And they gradually start to come out and gather to bring the light back in the spring. And it's just lovely. I think the thing that captivated me most about it um, were the pictures of, if I can find them, oh, it's beautifully photographed. Oopsie. There we go. No. You see, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a natural um, filming wizard. It was the... Um, I don't know if you can see the stockings and the little weasels looking at it. It was these images of the animals with the seed pod lights. They're just so beautiful. I think it was the photography and the styling of it that just absolutely enchanted me. So I had to get a copy. Um, and I have some of uh, Karen's cards as well. And at the back, it's all sorts of midwinter customs and facts. So it's a, it's a, it is a children's book, I guess. Um, but it's it's an enchanting adult's book as well. If you can see that, the light brothers combine their tiny sparks to light the earth once more, and she starts to wake. She smiles at the warmth and dreams of dancing flowers. She smiles snowdrops and crocuses to let us know that she'll dance again as the light returns. The light will always return because it, is, because it is guarded by small beings and they are steadfast in their task. So if you fancy a treat, I recommend this book. It's lovely. It's beautifully photographed, lovely needle felt with animals and a very positive message for now when we need to know that the light and hope will come back. Um, so very, very pretty. So we're going to move on straight into the um, my other bit of the book review. The two books I've been reading and listening to, um, the first is Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club. Now this does have a really nice um, red and cream um, paper cover. But because I do most of my book reading in the bath, because it's my sort of shut down, um, switch off, wind down time, I took the cover off because I don't want it to get tatty. It's got quite cool foxy end papers. Um, so what do I think of the book? I mean, I think Richard Osman's very funny. Um, he is one of those clever, intelligent, funny people that I do, um, I do find appealing. Um, 
the book is interesting. It's set in, in sort of in Cooper's Close, which is a retirement village, and about a group of people in their sort of seventies and eighties who like to investigate murders and cold cases, and led by Elizabeth. And there's lots of it, it's quirky. It's a quirky book. It's got interesting quirky um, way of writing. Sometimes it's written from the point of view of Joyce, one of the residents who's started writing a diary. Sometimes it's told in the third person. Um, and yes, yeah, some murders have started. They were investigating something, un, you know, just an old murder at the beginning, but now they're investigating a real series of murders um, connected to where they live. Um, and I, I am enjoying it. Um, I say it's funny, it's quirky. It's not the book that I have to rush back to. You know, normally if I'm reading a book that I really, really love, um, sorry, I'm just distracted because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven goldfinches at the very, very top of my tree. Let's see if I can, hang on. Um, woo, tripod. Actually, I can't turn videos around. I thought I could turn videos around, but I can't. Um, one, two, three, yep, yeah, seven. That's exciting, isn't it? Um, it's it's not the book that it hasn't got under my skin. It hasn't. I'm not desperate to finish what I'm doing to go and read it. I can pick it up. I can put it down. But I'm enjoying it when I do read it. Does that make sense? Um, so yes, I would recommend it. But it's not one that's going to stay with me forever um, as one of the best books I've ever read. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm interested to know how it goes. But I, yes, it's taken me I've, I'm about halfway through and I've been reading it for quite a few, well, a couple of weeks, probably. Um, so other things have been more interesting um, in the meantime. The other thing I've been doing is listening on Audible to an LJ Ross book. And I think I can't remember what it's called. I think it's Cuthbert's, Cuthbert's Way. No. Mm. I'm going to come back to you. Goodbye. Okay, so I'm back. Yes, the book is Cuthbert's Way by L.J. Ross. It's um, about the 17th or 18th in a series of crime novels based in the Northeast, based around Newcastle, Durham, um, Northumberland. So very relevant to where I live. Um, and it's... I started listening to these last year when lockdown first started and the characters kind of became my friends. Um, I had that continuity because I listened to a lot of them back to back to back, you know, one after the other. Um, I felt like I had a little community within the book I was listening to. The main character is DCI Ryan and he is the sort of dreamy, intelligent, um, principled, honest, hardworking, um, hero of the books. Um, so yes, you are meant to fall in love with his um, eyes, the colour of the North Sea, and I'm, I'm making it sound very pastiche, but it's not. It, there are bits where, you know, it gets a bit, a bit much, but yeah, he's, he's the main character, um, and, you know, bad, really bad things happen to him, but he gets through them, and he has an amazing team of um, co-workers within CID. Um, my favourite is Phillips. He's a sort of gruff northern sergeant um, who, and yeah, so there's sort of like a family within it. There's a, a lot of humour and stories of friendship and love that continue through all the books from the characters. And then there's the the murder mystery, and they've got some really bad people <laughs> in these stories. Um, and they're set at lots of different local beauty spots. So uh, Mr. Lockett has said he's not going anywhere with me on an outing again, because he reckons I'm just getting um, tips on how to finish them off in a local beauty spot. Um, so this one I've just listened to, I enjoyed because I'd finished listening to them last year. Um, so it's nice to have my friends back. 
Um, but I, again, it wasn't the best one of them. Um, it was a bit, parts of it were a bit far-fetched. Um, and lots of really bad things keep happening to these people. Uh, but it was enjoyable and I would recommend the LJ Ross series if you want something to get into. And as audible books, they're quite short. They're about seven or eight hours on average. So you can listen and get to the end and then there's another one and it, I, I do really enjoy them. Um, they're my sort of guilty, guilty pleasure. Uh, I find that I don't like listening to um a lot of the books i would love to read um or enjoy reading chick lit um easy reading i can't listen to on audible because i find the narration too goopy and girly and you know <laughs> cutesy so i do i must admit i do prefer listening to male narrators um and yeah i'm not quite sure why but I particularly like listening to mystery or detective books, whereas I might read something completely different. So that was two different detective stories, um, very different styles, um, both very enjoyable in their own way. Um, I don't think they'll set the world on fire, but I'm enjoying them and would recommend them, but not maybe as much as I would recommend The Seal Woman's Gift that I talked about last time which was truly brilliant okay talk to you soon bye it's actually much darker than it looks I'm not sure what time it is it's quite late you can see all the lights are on in Sunderland Freezing cold, and here we are eating ice creams, which is what you do on a freezing cold evening in January.